Hey everybody, Steve Hansen here with the janitorialstore.com and my housecleaningbiz.com. You know, as we continue to grow our companies, our cleaning companies, you know, at some point we're going to have to hire a supervisor. And, you know, when that time comes, you're going to have to decide on how much supervision they're going to be given the employees or how many of those employees they're going to supervise. But this uh, video is on just the topic of how much they should be uh, cleaning, doing cleaning, and how much should they be supervising, supervising the team. So, you know, once you uh, go through your process, and let's say you promoted somebody within uh, to be a supervisor, um, you know, and hopefully that you did that correctly, because most of the time the issue uh, that companies have is that they'll promote people that aren't really ready to be promoted or should be in that position. And, uh, you know, I see that a lot with cleaning companies. So when you're ready to hire a supervisor and you decide to go within, make sure that the person that you're going to talk to about it is actually a good fit for the position. Uh, in any case, what you should do is that you should have a 90-day probation period for any position that you have because that way if, when you promote the person in that position and it doesn't work out, well, then they can go back to what they were doing before. But anyway... Uh, it's very, very important to make sure that you, uh, you know, do your due diligence. Uh, make sure that you're selecting the right person that is, that can actually handle the job. You know, let alone having cleaning uh, knowledge. You know, they have to have management knowledge too. They know how to. They need to know how to handle people and how to work with people and how to how to lead people. So with that said, um, not all cleaners, just because they're a good cleaner, make good supervisors. So I, I just can't emphasize that enough because I see it so much. Uh, so just make sure that uh, the person that you select is the right person for the job and make sure that you have a, a probation period. Once you hire that supervisor, uh, you know, take them through supervisor training, uh, no matter what level they are, if, they, if they've been a supervisor in the past or, or wherever it may be, still take them through your supervising training program. Uh, you'll find that on the janitorial store. Uh, most of you guys know that already, all the members. You know that uh, you can go to the janitorial store and we got a supervisor training program there, uh, videos, and uh, you can go to the Clean Smart University and we've got just a wealth of uh, information on, on management and supervisors. But um, once you hire that person, you're going to have to decide on... I, I always like to have a, uh, a working supervisor. Uh, that means to where I'm having them actually doing some cleaning and they're responsible for some, for, for some accounts uh, and accounts of their own. And then I like to have them supervise uh, uh, you know, uh, a handful of people, uh, whatever it may be. But that's what I like to do. That's always worked out well for us. So typically when I start that, um, I'll have a supervisor start cleaning and they're doing 80% of their, of their task is cleaning. 20% uh, of their task is supervising. That's how I always start them out. It's a good way to, you know, especially for somebody that doesn't have supervi supervising experience, it's a good way to get their feet wet, uh, you know, and slowly introduce them into, uh, into the supervising role because things change, you know, especially if that person was on a crew, on a, on a cleaning crew in a team, and now here they are, their boss, you know, the, the whole aspect changes. So, um, so that's what I do, and as the person... As the person uh, gains more knowledge and we bring on and we continue to grow uh, to where I decide to give them more locations and or more uh, uh, team members, then I move them up to where they're doing 70% cleaning, 30% supervising. I will continue to do that, you know, until the person's doing 60, 40, 50, 50. Uh, at this point here, you know, I think we've probably got a pretty good, uh, pretty good chance with that uh, supervisor. Uh, uh, has the knowledge and is performing well um, and can really, really handle managing uh, subordinates, you know, other employees, and making sure that everything's getting done to company standards. As we continue to grow the company, again, we're going to bring this, we're going to have this supervisor and we're going to give them more and more responsibilities. Now, when we do that, obviously we're going to have to uh, reduce the cleaning that they're doing. You know, uh, if we continue to give them responsibilities, we can't be having them cleaning 70% of the time and then uh, supervising 70% of the time. That just won't work. 
So as they as we continue to give them responsibility and grow in the business, taking on more accounts, well then their their cleaning percentages actually gets lowered, you know, down 30, 20, 10 percent, eventually to where they're not cleaning at all. They're 100 percent supervising the team. So that's our ultimate goal is to get them here at that 100 percent of supervising. So when we have them there, we know that all they're doing is that they're responsible for a certain number of accounts. Uh, they, they're making sure that our, our quality of cleaning is where it needs to be. They're making sure that we have a team in place. Uh, if anybody needs to be trained, a new team member that's, that's brought on, uh, they're training them and making sure that uh, they know what they need to do uh, to be the, the most efficient cleaner possible. But that's what they're doing when they're supervising at 100%. Um, so that's their responsibility. Like I say, this works out worked out very well for us. Um, so, you know, give it a try because sometimes what happens is cleaning companies will throw a supervisor in there 100% supervising. Uh, I don't think that's a very good idea. You know, uh, depending on the depending on the knowledge uh, of the of the person and the supervising management skills they've got, I still like to feel somebody out. I don't care if they've told me that they've been uh, supervising for five years. Okay, well, that you know that's great, but have they actually had the proper training? You know, uh, most of them haven't. So, and that's what I've found. You know, through my experience of 33 years of doing this, that they just don't have the experience that they need. So that's why I use this scale here to, to bring on my supervisors and move them to where eventually they're doing 100% uh, supervi uh, supervising. So I hope you find this helpful. Um, our next video, I'm going to actually do a video on uh, how many people that they should have, uh, should be supervising. Um, so uh, I'll do that probably uh, in the next few days or so. But uh, watch for that because, you know, it's very important. We need to know how many people a supervisor can handle to, to, to manage correctly and properly. So hopefully you find this helpful. If you do, you know, click on the like button, uh, click on the share button, and definitely check out the comments below. You know, I always put some documents or, or, or a, hit, a link for, for something. So uh, always check that out. And uh, thanks again for watching.